because obviously the left could go too far and none of them would answer. And so really not one, not one Ser dead in serious private in private as well. Come yeah. on. No, I'm telling you the truth. And I, I know some people. I know some people who would answer that. Well, look, it's also I, I stopped doing a fair bit of that about a year and a half ago and and things have changed. There are more people on the in the moderate on the moderate Democrat side who are willing to draw a line with regard to the radical leftists, but they're still not very good at defining it. So they'd ask, they'd reverse the question and ask me, like, when do you think they go too far? And I thought that was simple. It's like equity, equality of outcome. And the, the universal response to that was always the same. Oh, they don't really mean that. Well, it's like, it yeah, is, they do. To be fair. Bill Maher brought on Jordan Peterson onto his podcast, The Club Random Podcast, and Jordan Peterson absolutely demolished Bill Maher on multiple different issues, this one being the most heated out of all of them that I have seen. Let's get into this clip here of Jordan Peterson going on The Club Random Podcast on Bill Maher's podcast and absolutely destroying Bill Maher for his woke stances. Many of them. And I asked them all on the Democrat side, I asked them all the same question purposefully. And I asked this to RFK too. When does the left go too far? Because obviously the left could go too far and none of them would answer. And so really not one, not one Ser dead in serious private? in private as well. Come yeah. on. No, I'm telling you the truth. And I, I know some people. I know some people who would answer that. Well, look, it's also I, I stopped doing a fair bit of that about a year and a half ago. And and things have changed. There are more people on the in the moderate on the moderate Democrat side who are willing to draw a line with regard to the radical leftists, but they're still not very good at defining it. So they'd ask they'd reverse the question and ask me, like, when do you think they go too far? And I thought that was simple. It's like equity, equality of outcome. And the the universal response to that was always the same. Oh, they don't really mean that. Well, it's like it yeah, is, they do. To be fair, it is more complicated than just that. Equality, meaning equality of outcome, I believe in that too. Equity is what they changed it to. A lot of people on the far left, and you know, Biden went along with all of it. Um, means no. Some people started out uh, not from the same place, so we should make an effort to redress that. I believe in some of that theoretically and some of it in how you would put it into practice. You can't just say, okay, let's, uh, some people weren't even at the starting gate for the first 350 years, and now go. Of course, there's going to be remedial, I, I think, uh, things that we can do, and we're doing many of them. We're doing some of them anyway. Um, but do I think it means we should like make it that medical school is not something that you can only get into completely by merit? No, because no one wants a doctor who got there um, by affirmative action. Yeah, you don't want a doctor that got there through affirmative action when you are the patient, but everybody on the left, I'm not gonna say everybody, but most people on the left, including Bill Maher, I'm sure at times, has said exactly that that people should get into med school. And that, that's how the system works right now. Like Asians get turned down. You always see these stories where Asian will, Asians will get turned down from Ivy League schools because they are Asian, <laughs> because they have too many Asians, because Asians excel in school so much, they have to turn them down. Like that is not the best person for the job getting the job. That is not the best person with the best grades, the, the highest IQ getting into the schools. That's not how it's working. So the trickle down effect from that is you have people getting medical degrees and becoming doctors who aren't the best at those things because they're not getting into the schools because they're certain skin colors. And people who are certain other skin colors are getting into schools because they are those skin colors, which obviously will result in, in them getting degrees because they have a certain skin color, which is equity. You know, that, that that is not how things are supposed to be run. And Bill Maher would say, well, if you're the patient, of course, you don't want somebody who's only ha has a degree because they're a certain skin color to have the skin color or to have that degree because of that. But whenever you're not the patient, all these lefties, they they pander or they they push for exactly that. They push for this equity because they, they push for DEI. They push for affirmative action. They push for these things that result in exactly what Bill Maher is saying he doesn't want to happen. These people are insane, I swear. Yes. Right. But it, but 
but you would count what I said to be valid, right? That you can't say if you started 300 years late, we expect you to be. I guess I guess this is one of the things that probably tilts me in the more conservative direction. And partly as a social scientist is that well-meaning interventions seldom have the outcome that's designed. Correct. So even and, and, and it's, it's really a no, radical I would agree. problem. OK, so the, the historical solution to the problem of in a, unequal distribution of, say, even of opportunity is that everyone is treated the same under the law, regardless of their regardless of anything, regardless of wealth, regardless of race, right. age, status. It's the same. Now, obviously, there's elements of that that appear unjust. So if you make a million dollars a year and you get a thousand dollar fine for speeding, that's a lot different than a thousand dollar fine for someone who makes twelve thousand dollars a year. And so then you might say, well, maybe your fine should be income adjusted. OK, but the problem with that is like if you enjoy content like this, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video. OK, you're differentially um, privileged with regards to your wealth. Well, how many dimensions of differential privilege are there? And the answer to that is, well, there's as many dimensions as there are differences between people. And that's an infinite number of differential advantages and disadvantages. And so I'll give you an example that I think is quite germane. So um, there's obviously disparity in wealth. Well, one of the best predictors of wealth is age. Older people are richer. Well, why? Well, obviously, because they've well, had their whole life to work. Race. So, yeah, even, yeah. Even more. OK, but l let, let me make the case with, with this for a minute. OK, so then you might say, well, it's very unfair that the old people have the money. It's like. Yeah, fair enough, buddy. <laughs> but the young people have the youth. And if I'm serious, so and if you took the old right. person and said, look, <laughs> you give me all your money. Right. I'm 18. You give your, me right. all your money and I'll be 65 and you get to be 18 and broke. But would you actually take that bargain? Because I wouldn't. Even though I'm punching 70 in the mouth, I still wouldn't do it because my head would still be my 18 year old head. And I just couldn't take any more of that. Your, your stupidity, or at least my stupidity at that age caused so much pain unnecessary. I think this is cope. You know, there's a common saying, youth is wasted on the young. I think if anybody, you know, I'm only 25, but I think if I could go back to my 18 year old self and then live all those years over again with the same knowledge that I have right now, empty my bank account and do that, I would 100% do that. Uh, Cause I, I would be able to make way more and make way more of the years as well. But also the point that Bill Maher was trying to make there with encounter to Jordan Peterson's point by saying age or Jordan Peterson was saying the age is a predictor of wealth and Bill Maher said race even more. It's still like the, the the point that leftists try to make is like, oh, we should give support to people who are black or, you know, other races other than white because they're they're more broke than white people. It's like, well, if your goal is to help poor people, why the hell are we only helping poor black people? Why not just, you know, the, you know what the number one indicator of someone being broke is the fact that they're broke, not the fact that they're black or white, the fact that they have no money in their bank account. So instead of dancing around it and trying to help people who are certain skin colors or certain you know ethnicities certain genders whatever as a predictor that they might be broke how about we just help the broke people if you want to do that you know it, it's so stupid it's it's really really ridiculous the the ways that these people like the, the mental gymnastics that they'll play you know it, it really is ridiculous this every pain in my life that i would rather be this age well that and by the way, I'm sorry to cut it off again, but I don't believe in helping the broke people. You know, I, I, I don't. I think if you're a homeless veteran or something, and yeah, you deserve to get help. But if you're just broke and you're living off food stamps and you're just pumping out children, you know, living in a trailer or living in a project or something, you don't deserve to get help. I don't think we should be wasting tax dollars, my tax dollars, and you know, on, on people like that. I just don't. I don't believe in that. That's another sign of differential advantage is you've got the disadvantages of being old, but now you're not quite as stupid. So, not you know, quite. that's no, right, it, it's, right. it's awesome not being stupid. Yeah, right. It right. just is awesome. There's like that old commercial priceless. It's priceless not what you, being fucking what, stupid. What do you think? What do you think is better about you now than than when you were young? 
I'm not fucking stupid. Well, I don't make stupid mistakes. I don't make that. I mean, I'm sure people would say, oh, Bill, you said this the other week. And nah, I, I meant it. And it wasn't horrible. Well, frequency and, I, and, 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 and intensity you know, also matter. Also, I'm mixing dangerous chemicals every week. OK, I'm playing third base in. OK, I'm going to get more hard hit grounders. And uh, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. just not just but personally, much more even my personal life. I mean, men take a very long time to mature. I mean, when when a woman says like, boy, you know, you need a 40 year head start. Yeah, you do. You need like a 40 year head start to be on the same level. It's just cr at least I it's crazy how immature as they would as society would define immature. You can be or I was. Uh, late into life because the immature things are the fun ones. Mm -hmm. I still don't want to give them up. You know, people are different. We talked about this the last time you were here. You know, we we could not be more different in that way. I mean, you're so much more a woman's dream, and I'm like a woman's nightmare in many ways, like never committed, never got married, never wanted to. I never understood how people could, and I see so many people who talk about it, like married couples, and they talk very finely about like, oh, remember when we were in love? And they're reminiscing about this time in their life that lasted like maybe two years years and they're living off that for the rest of their life for the rest of their life they're kind of remembering oh yeah that time when you were crazy in love and you'd have sex all the time and it was hot and it's like yeah and i i had that and went <laughs> can we just keep this going forever would that really be the worst thing I, I, it, it, <laughs> but you probably have both well it's something that it's something that you can practice Really? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. That does sound miserable. <laughs> I can't. I can't lie. Like, <clears throat> you know, I, not not to make this whole podcast about like relationships or anything like that, but it does sound kind of miserable whenever people are like, "Well, that that connection that you have, you can practice it. You can build that over time." It's like, yeah, but I'd rather not. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to do that. That sounds horrible. A horrible life to live, personally. And I, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good on that. Like, if it becomes a point where it, I have to practice. And we have to put in work to form like a connection. Like I'm just gonna leave. Like I'm just gonna be honest with you. Let me know in the comments though. We thought about Jordan Peterson destroying Bill Maher, and just you could tell that Bill Maher was trying to dance around actually getting into full-on debate with Jordan Peterson because he knew he was wrong. He knew he was in the wrong. He knew Jordan Peterson would tear him apart. Let me know in the comments what you think about Jordan Peterson's appearance here on the Club Random podcast and him destroying Bill Maher.